Alright ladies and gents, welcome back to another AutoCAD video. Uh, this is going to be um, possibly like the first video that you would absolutely watch on my channel, okay? If you're trying to learn AutoCAD. So the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to show you guys, and this is also a recap for some of my students if they, if they were to miss class. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to sign up for an account first. So, you know, this is if you're a student or a teacher um, and you wanted to get the software for free. You're going to go to autodesk.com slash education and at the top you're going to hit sign in. Uh, you're going to hit create account and you're going to fill out your information. Okay. After this information is filled out, they're going to send you an email and you need to verify that email. Um, you'll also at that point, once it's verified, you'll have your account and you'll be able to use that account on the AutoCAD web app if that's something that you want to do. If your school is uh, going virtual and you, you, know, you can't get them the full version of the software. Um, but you can also get the full version of the software by continuing with the account creation. Okay, so with continuing, what will happen is you'll go back to autodesk.com slash education and you'll go to sign in and you'll go to sign in with the account that you just created and you'll go to get products. Okay. Now, what's going to happen for you most likely is it's going to say that you need to unlock the educational access to Autodesk products, um, which means that if I go down to AutoCAD, you don't see an option that says get started here. So you're going to have to um, see it says already have educational access. I already have that, so I would sign in, but you would hit get started. And at that point, AutoCAD get product. Now, if you're not getting this, it's going to ask you to verify documents. So it's going to say you have to upload your school ID card or some other document. Just make sure that's okay with like your parents um, and with your school before you do that. For my students, we're not positive that we're going to go that route yet because we're not, you know, we're not sure. Um, so they're actually using the web app. So if you're at this point and you're stuck, then that's where the web app is going to come in. Okay. So what you do is you go to web.autocad.com. Let's try that again. I'm going to go to Google first. Sometimes the, the direct site doesn't work. AutoCAD web app we can type also. And right here, web.autocad.com. Okay, so yeah, that took a couple minutes to load. Um, so now we're in. What you're going to do is it's going to ask you on the side to sign in. And you can sign in with that account that you created. And then you'll get to this page right here. Okay. On this page, you're going to hit new drawing. You're going to type anything you want for the name. Make sure that you, if you're in the United States, that you're changing drawing units to Imperial and hitting open. And that's going to make it so that we can draw with feet and inches. This is going to load up. If this doesn't work and, and it's not loading, um, it could be because your internet is a little slower or because a lot of people are using the web app right now. Okay. So it seems to be working fine for me right now. Um, so a couple things that we did in class today. Um, basically, we just talked about the fact that this is your drawing space. This is your command line. Okay. And again, this is not the full version of the software. This is just the web based version. So it's not, it doesn't have all the same tools, um, but it, it is pretty, uh, pretty useful for now. Okay. So you've got your drawing space. You've got your command line where you can type your different commands. If I wanted to go into line, I could type line and hit enter. Um, and then that's going to bring me into the line tool where I can, you know, click around and create different lines. Okay. Uh, if I hit escape, it gets me out of that tool. Um, I can also go over here to where it says draw and click on line, right? So sometimes it's, it might be easier just to click on the icon than it is to type it, but you know, it's up to you which, which way you want to do it. Okay. Um, we can create a bunch of different things here. We can make rectangles where you just click one corner and click the other. Um, I can do circles. Where's the center of the circle? And then how big do you want the circle? And you can also type numbers while you're doing this too. So if I was doing a circle and I clicked where I wanted to start, if I type five, that's going to make that circle be a five inch radius. Okay. So you can see how far zoomed out I was. These are really big circles. This would be a five inch radius circle. Okay. Now, how do we delete stuff? If I click on it, I can hit delete on the keyboard or I can click and hold with my mouse and move to the left to create a green box you know, left up, left down, doesn't matter. And when you let go, it will select anything that it was, uh, that it was touching. Okay. And you would hit delete. If I hit the back arrow, that's going to bring things back. 
Okay, I can go a couple steps back if I wanted to. Um, if I click and hold and go to the right, it's going to be a blue box, and that's only going to select things that are fully inside of it. So the green box is different than the blue box in that the blue box is only going to select what's fully inside of that box, and the green box is only going to select, or I should say it, it will select everything that's touching that box. Okay? So I can select everything like this, and I could hit delete, and I could get that off the screen. All right? Um, now let's just bring that back again. If I wanted to pan, pan on the screen, okay, I'm going to hold down the scroller button. This is an actual button here, so click that and hold it down. And you'll see you get a little hand that you can just kind of pan the drawing around. Uh, if I want to zoom in and out, I'm using the same scroller, but I'm scrolling up and scrolling down. Okay. Uh, where your cursor is, is where it's going to zoom into. So if I wanted to zoom into this box, I'm going to put my cursor here and then scroll up. Right? Um, you know, like I said, you can make lines, you can make circles, rectangles, you can do a hatch pattern, which is basically just filling in a shape with either a solid or, um, or some kind of hatch. Um, you can, let's see, we don't really want to talk about properties yet or layers. We don't, I, I think that, let's talk about annotate. Okay, so let's say I wanted to know how big this box was. If I go to the dimension tool here, which is just dim, and I click from left to right, and then I click up, you'll see the numbers are really small because that box is really big, but as I zoom in, you'll see that it's 170 inches, okay? So if I wanted to make something that was a specific size, again, clicking here, I have two different boxes that I can do, and I can tab between them. If I did like, you know, 20 by, and I hit tab there, by 30, and hit enter, that's a 20 by 30 box. Okay, or you can flip the numbers and have it be, you know, landscape 30 by 20. Okay, um, if I wanted to use lines and draw, you know, I can click anywhere. And you're reading down here as well. It says specify the first point. So where do I want to start? Do I want to start on one of my objects that I already have? Do I want to click in the open space? Or do I want to start at like 0, 0? You could do that as well. And you'll see that 0, 0 is like way over here for some reason. So I'm panning over. That's zero, zero. Oops, cancel. Let's try that again. Zero comma zero. I could draw that to, you know, using regular coordinates, 20 comma zero. Uh, oh, you know what? It's actually easier just to, to draw your line across and type 20. I don't know if this version is going to allow you to type in something comma something. Let's see if you, oh snap, oh track. Polar ortho object snap polar tracking coordinates. Yeah, it should accept coordinates. Well, anyways, if it you know you should so in regular AutoCAD and in here you should be able to type in the coordinate something comma something. But you might need to put your cursor down here for that. Yeah, that's what it was. All right, so you got to put your cursor down at the bottom in order to do that. Okay. Um, now going to the right here, I could just type like 100 inches. And then I could hit tab and say, oh, I want to do a 30 degree line. And you'll see that that creates a 100, once I hit enter, a 100, uh, 100 inch line at 30 degrees. Okay, so you can draw that way as well. All right. Um, now, as far as what you can actually modify about the drawing. So in annotate, you can also do text. We don't really need to talk about that because it's pretty standard. Um, but in modify, you can, you can change things about what you've already drawn. So let's say, you know, I had a couple more lines on here. And I hit escape to get out of that tool. When I go to modify, I can move things by clicking move, by clicking on what I want to move. Now, if you want to select multiple things, you actually hold down shift in this one. Which is not like regular AutoCAD. Regular AutoCAD, you could just keep clicking and, and getting everything, you know, selecting um, just by clicking more things. Um, but now I'm going to hit enter because I'm done selecting objects. And I'm going to click on one of these base points. So I can either grab it from here or there or here, wherever you want. Click that, and you can now move that object or those objects to anywhere you want. And when you click again, it'll put it down. So the exact same thing applies for copy, that I can select what I want to copy. Hold shift if I want to select multiple things. And then hit enter and grab it from some base point, And I can make copies of whatever I grabbed. Uh, mirror. 
if I wanted to take this and this and hit enter, and then I want to mirror it over this plane right here, I would click one line and then I would tell it where I want it to mirror over it. So if I go straight up, it's going to mirror it side to side. Um, if I go left to right, it's going to mirror it top to bottom. Okay. So you can do that just by clicking. I can pan the screen again just so I can see everything. Okay. Um, let's see what else do we have here. We can use the erase tool if you'd like, but I just prefer to click things, you know, and notice how this is still asking me a question down here. It says, do you want to erase the source object for that mirror that we did? If I hit yes, it's going to erase these two lines. If I hit no, it just keeps everything. Okay. Um, but yeah, you can use the erase tool to click multiple things and, uh, and hit enter and that will erase them. Or you could just click on it and hit the delete key on the keyboard. I think that's faster. Okay. Um, the last tool, well, okay, we'll talk about rotate. Same thing. You just click what you want to rotate and then you hit enter. And then you got to click the point that you want it to rotate at. So if I want to rotate it here, I click that point and it'll rotate off of that point just like a clock. Okay. Um, if I did this, which is scale, I can make things bigger or smaller. So let's say I wanted to scale down this and that. I hit enter. I grab a base point and I can just move my cursor in and out to make it bigger and smaller. Or I can type a number. If I did five, it would make it five times bigger. If I did one over two, it would make it half as big as it was. Okay, so you can do fractions um, or you can do whole numbers. Okay, uh, the offset tool, that one's, that one's pretty important. We use this for a lot of our drawings. Offset is basically like creating a copy, but it's creating a copy that's parallel to the lines that already exist. Okay, so if I did, um, you can see it says select the object that you want to offset. This is different than AutoCAD because normally in AutoCAD, the full version, you would type in how far you want to offset first. You'd hit enter, then you would click the line and you would click on the side that you want to offset it. But in this web version, it's actually different. You have to click what you want to offset first. And then you see that it's going to make an offset and you know, it wants to know which way you want to go and where you want to go. So if I, let's see, if I go like this and I'm going down and I type a number 10, it'll go 10 down from there and make, and make the offset. Okay. Um, that's pretty much it for the web app. That's all I wanted to really talk about. It's more important to uh, make sure that you, you know, get the software figured out. And if we can't get that figured out, then you're using the web app for the first couple weeks. And then we'll go from there. Um, you can save your work up here just by hitting save. And then, you know, very easily you can just close the window and, and come back to it later. All right. So I appreciate you guys watching. This was another web app AutoCAD video. And hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one. See you later. Gotta catch some more.